All right. Hi, everyone. Welcome to this month's Portals Community Call. I'm Jason Gumpert from msdynamicsworld.com. As always, uh, really pleased to be able to uh, host this session and to welcome you all and to introduce our, um, well, our, I guess our real host, <laughs> Nick Hayduk. Uh, Nick, it's great to have you back as well. Um, as you get started, I just want to let the audience know uh, we are taking your questions, so enter them at any time. Nick does a great job of keeping his eye on those. I will too. And uh, we're also recording today's session. We'll be sending a link for that out to all of you after the session ends. I think that's all I had for uh, starting things off. Nick, so I'm going to hand things over to you. All right. Yeah, we've got lots of fun stuff to talk about today. We're going to go through Power Pages search, and uh, we can talk about some uh, release or 2023 release wave two plans. So lots of fun stuff to go through today. So well, let's get into it. A uh, quick intro, if this is the first time you're joining us, um, there's a picture of me from, I don't know, 20 years ago. Uh, my name is Nicholas Hayduk. Uh, I am with Engineered Code Consulting, Inc. I'm a Microsoft MVP. They they welcomed me back into the fold again for another year, so they're stuck with me until at least next July. I've uh, been working with uh, Power Pages, Power Apps Portals uh, for, for many years now, uh, having started my career at, at ADX Studio. Um, if you're not already connected with me on LinkedIn or don't follow us on Twitter, YouTube, um, we've got all sorts of different social media channels out there um, that uh, Jose, who's on the call here, expertly helps me manage. Um, if you've enjoyed any of our memes recently, um, you can thank Jose for help, helping me uh, figure those out. Uh, we've got a blog that uh, we do about once a month, got another one coming out here in the next week or so. Uh, we've got our YouTube channel where we do our, our weekly tips and our um, our podcast, uh, available at CRM.audio, Refresh the Cache, uh, that I co-host with George Tabinski. So lots of ways to consume uh, the content that we do. Um, and if you ever have any questions, um, yeah, uh, LinkedIn is probably the most popular way to get in touch with me. So please do that. All right. Um, as always, just want to thank Jason and the, the whole team at MS Dynamics World for their support of these these monthly calls. I think if I recall the social media correctly, this is number 40, so that's no small number. And uh, Jason has been uh, along for the entire ride, so I thank him and his team for uh, their support of these calls. Um, so uh, what are we doing today? So as usual, we'll have our news segment, which as I mentioned with the release wave notes coming out, um, as well as some other things coming up on the, that were announced on the blog. Um, yeah, lots to discuss there. We'll then talk about uh, Power Pages Search, uh, specifically the what they call the global search functionality. Um, and then we'll we'll do the uh, the date and time of our next community call, and uh, we'll do uh, Q and A if uh, if time allows. So let's talk about the news. Um, if you haven't uh, already kind of read through the release uh, plan, I believe that came out, it was last last Tuesday perhaps. Um, and so if you're not familiar with kind of how the release waves work um, with Microsoft, they've been essentially break it out into six month halves of years. So um, essentially it's April to September and then October to March. Um, so um, as, Part of that, what they do is a number of months in advance is they, re they release their plan. So the release wave two, so the 2023 release wave two is from October to March. Um, the plan, so this is the things that they hope to deliver during that time frame. So it's not all in October. Um, it's, you know, that's what they're hoping to have uh, for us over those, that six month uh, plan. So nothing's written in stone, but that's what they hope to do. Um, with regards to Power Pages specifically, um, they have some stuff for managed environments. So if you're using Power Platform managed environments, um, there's a few little bells and whistles in there that um, are specific to Power Pages. I think it has something to do with um, some maybe some pipeline features and some um, some stats. I think you get in the in the Power Platform Admin Center. So a little bit to do with managed environments. Um, as well as they've also will have some admin security and analytics views in the Power Platform Admin Center. 
So that's giving you some details like, I think it's like how many users you have, page views, those sorts of like admin things, uh, analytics and some security stuff as well. So um, within the Power Platform Admin Center, you're gonna get, you're gonna get more data about your uh, Power Pages site than you, than you ever have before. Um, they've also uh, talked about commenting. So basically collaboration in the Power Pages Design Studio um, I get asked this quite a bit. In fact, I was asked it earlier this week, like how do we manage this when we have multiple developers working on a Power Pages site? You know, what's, what are the best practices there? So, I mean, specifically for that question, it was about, you know, working in the same files. And so my advice on in that case is to, you know, if each developer gets their own web file, uh, or sorry, web template, they do their work in there. And then you include those web templates within the, you know, kind of the the parent, so whether it's in the custom JavaScript of somewhere or the copy section on a web page, um, if you give each developer their own web template, then they're kind of working on their own separate files and you're, you're less likely to run into situations where people are overwriting people's changes. Uh, but this new feature that they're, that they're talking about here is commenting. So the ability to um, comment on within the design studio, add comments and kind of everyone as they're working on it can see, can see those comments as they pop up. So. Uh, that's what's coming for the design studio. Um, uh, if you've lived under a rock, then you'll hear about Copilot for the first time today. But uh, otherwise, you probably have heard a whole whole bunch about Copilot over the last I don't know, six months or so. Um, so more Copilot coming for Power Pages. So one is the ability to create an entire website. So a whole new site with Power Pages, and you can kind of tell what you need. Uh, another one is the ability to kind of answer questions. I believe this is kind of in the design studio is as you're building it, um, you can kind of just ask questions. Hey, how do I do this? And what it's doing is it's just kind of indexing all the learn content, all the kind of content that Microsoft has on Power Pages. Um, so, you know, kind of an improved chatbot experience for um, answering questions as you're building Power Pages. Um, and the one I think the Copilot thing that I'm most excited about is to actually include Copilot on your Power Pages site for the users of your Power Pages site. So that's not Copilot for makers, which the other one two are. This is Copilot for the users of your Power Pages site. So I think that's that's pretty cool that they're you know extending to all you know all the different places where 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 Copilot can be used. Uh, and then finally, the last one on the list, uh, Bootstrap V5. So we've We've known that that's, I think that's scheduled. I think I think the release note said July for that to be in preview. Um, I personally haven't played around with that yet. So I, I don't, I haven't seen that it's, it's out in preview yet, but I think it's coming soon. Um, so what this is, is the general availability. So that's, that just kind of tells us that they're targeting at some point in those, you know, six months to, to have um, Bootstrap 5, not only available in preview, but to be, uh, generally available for everyone to be using. So um, I do know that there's a transition period for that. Um, I think it's going to be relatively lengthy. It's not something that's going to get turned off, you know, in a month or two. Um, but for everyone with their existing sites that use version three of Bootstrap, um, now is the time to start uh, prepping for a an upgrade to your site. Um, so something to keep in mind. Uh, and so those were, you know, those were the the items that were in the release notes. Um, n not a, it, I, I would say we, compared to the last couple of times, the list is a little bit smaller compared to what we used to see a few years ago. It would, a few years ago, this would have been a big list. Now it's kind of a, I don't know, medium list um, to only have, I guess, about five main bullet points there. Um, but uh, yeah, you'll obviously see the continued investment in Copilot. And um, yeah, the thing that's going to keep all of us Power Pages people busy over the next couple of years is is probably Bootstrap version five. So get ready. Um, yeah, and beyond just the release notes, there were a couple of things announced in on the Power Pages blog um, by the product team. Um, so one was uh, essentially support for Power Pages within the Power Platform pipelines. Uh, so if you're using the pipelines features. That, that exists directly within Power Platform, um, you can start to leverage that for your Power Page site to move that between environments. Um, and what that's kind of mainly doing is leveraging the new uh, enhanced data model, which allows you to um, make your Power Pages configuration solution aware. 
So all your web page records, site settings, content snippets, all those things can be included directly within the solution. And so when your pipeline moves solutions across, it's going to be moving that um, configuration data across with it as well. So that was in the uh, the blog. Um, governance settings, uh, the ability to control anonymous access. Um, I think there's a few different options to say, you know, all for all sites except these ones, for all, for all sites, no sites, you know, you can control um, how anonymous access is granted to um, Power Pages sites across a tenant. So that's a new feature that was there. I remember being involved with some large clients where that was a that was a showstopper. The fact that we could have a global setting that controlled that thing was a big a big deal. So glad to see that that that's um, available. Um, and then the last one here is the ability to edit the complete site code with with VS Code for Web. So um, if you haven't played around with this already in terms of the VS Code for Web, it's pretty cool when you're in the Power Pages Design Studio. If you're you're on a page and you want to edit the the raw HTML, um, rather than some you know rich text editor that Microsoft has borrowed from somewhere, some open open source, what it actually does is it just opens it up in VS Code for Web. So that's great, but it was limited to really just like the content sections. They added it to a few other places, I like think the the website headers and footers. Um, but with this with this kind of new announcement, it's pretty much anything that you could want to edit with VS Code. Essentially, a similar experience to if you download the VS Code or v, download the the, the Power Pages site using the the pack PA Portal download command, you can essentially do that right in VS Code for web. So you know, custom JavaScript um, on forms and multi-step forms and lists, uh, web templates, all of that is. Uh, easily editable in VS Code for web, so that's a uh, that's a game changer. It could uh, we'll see if that uh, changes my opinion on how often I use the um, Portal Code Editor tool in the XRM toolbox because that's still something I use all the time. Um, but we'll see if the VS Code for web might uh, might uh, be my new way. I'll give it a try and, and see how I like it. So. Um, yeah, and so that's kind of the news. Again, lots of news with the with the release wave plan coming out, and uh, yeah, a few new goodies from the product team directly on on the blog. So, um, okay, we've got uh, just double checking no, no questions yet. So, uh, moving on to today's topic, which is uh, Power Pages Search. Um, so, I did want to mention that, like you know, Search itself, there there's a few different places where um, you could use the word search uh, on Power Pages. So if we're talking on, you know, on lists, there's, you know, searching in lists. So it's kind of like the quick find on lists. There's filtering on lists. So there's a few different places that you could consider search. Um, but today we're talking about global search. So that's the like, think of it as the, you know, the website search when you when you're on your Power Pages site and you click the little magnifying glass and you type in a, a search and it shows you all the results. Um, that's what we're talking about today. So um, in the Microsoft documentation, that's kind of referred to typically as the, the global search. So um, historically, um, this used uh, Lucene.net. So Lucene is a search um, search kind of technology that is one of the more popular ones, maybe the most popular. I've seen it many times uh, in many different um, uh you know, technology stack. So it's it's not it's not a Microsoft thing. I believe it originally is like an Apache open source type um, thing. There was a port of the Lucene, the original kind of Lucene project to .NET. And so when ADX Studio was building the search capabilities into their product all those years ago, they decided to use Lucene.net as the the search technology. So the idea there is relatively simple. Lucene is a, a technology that allows you to build the index and then fire queries against that index. Um, so with Power Pages, what it did was it identified all the content that you wanted. And as that content got updated, um, it updated that index um, kind of as, as it went. Um, and so you essentially had this index file that was associated with your Power Pages site. It was, I think, typically stored on the Power Pages server that's hosted in Azure. 
Um, and so, for example, you had a button if you went to underscore services slash about on your Power Pages site as an admin, you'd have a button that says, hey, re-index my whole site. And that would grab all of the content that you've identified that you wanted searchable, and it would create this, this kind of large index file that existed on your Power Pages site. Um, that architecture uh, has been deprecated and is going away. I believe the, the current uh, timeline is by the end of October. So um, the use of lucene.net directly in Power Pages is being replaced by the use of Dataverse Search. So this is, I think, formerly known as Relevant Search in Dataverse, but this is the new you know, the nice fancy search that exists in model-driven apps um, that does some of the fancier things where it's, you know, you just type something wrong, it could kind of figure that out for you. Um, so Power Pages is replacing their old Lucene.net kind of custom implementation with instead um, using as its uh, data source for the, the queries on, on the website, um, it is using the Dataverse search itself. And one nice thing about Dataverse search is that it can go across tables. So with a regular advanced find, you're searching one specific table generally with, um, or you're, you're getting results from one specific table. Um, whereas with the Dataverse search, you can put in a search that says, you know, find me all the ones that have the word golf in it, and it can, and it can pull results back from multiple tables. Um, so if you've got an existing Power Pages site that uses uh, search, um, and you believe you know it was created more than a couple of years ago there's a good chance that it's using the old lucene.net um you you do want to look at um what's going to take to migrate to the new one it should be a relative for most people it's probably just flipping a switch um to, to say yeah start using the new one and um hopefully the only change you'll notice is that the you know you'll get better search results hopefully um but if you know, I, I can think of a customer, couple customers that where they really took the the Dataverse search, or sorry, the the search functionality and really took it to the max. So we'll, um, you know, that that would something would be, you know, if, once you flip the switch, you want to do a lot of testing to make sure everything's working as, as you want. So if you're not already aware of this, um, and you've ha you have an existing Power Pages site or Power Apps Portal site. Um, I would recommend that you uh, go check to see if Dataverse search is enabled, and, and I'll show you how to do that. If it's not, um, I would consider doing some testing where you do enable that in your uh, development environments to see how that, that will work. Um, so there's a couple of topics that we're going to get into. So one is uh, we're just going to look at like how Dataverse search, or sorry, how the, this uh, global search works in Power Pages. Um, and then the other thing we'll look at, and we'll look at how kind of how it works out of the box, because if you just install Power Pages, search is there, it works for a lot of implementations, it does exactly what you need it to do. Um, but we'll also um, talk about um, if you've got a custom table that you want to include, so we'll, we'll talk about how that's done as well. So um, again, what we're going to focus on here, because the, loose, the old lucene.net search is going away, we're really only going to talk about the Dataverse search, because that's that's the future. Um, so, if you want to get that to work, you got to make sure that Dataverse search is enabled in your environment, which, again, that will be for anything that's been created recently. Um, but if you're going through the process of transitioning from the old one, um, it could be, it's possible that your, your Power Platform environment won't have Dataverse search enabled in it. So you want to do that. That's done in the Power Platform Admin Center. So under the features, uh, product features section. Uh, and then the site setting, um, that's the important one. So uh, there's a site setting, search forward slash enable Dataverse search. You need that to be true. So if you go in there and you don't find a setting that says search forward slash enable Dataverse search, that means you are not using it. Um, but again, if you've installed Power Pages or Power Apps Portals in the last, you know, I'd say at least year or so, um, it will be there and it will be set to true. But if you don't find that setting or if it happens to be set to false, uh, then you know you're using the old one. So that's really what you do to, to, to turn it on. Now, the out of the box one, the out of the box search, what it does is it, certain, it searches certain tables. So it's not your entire Dataverse environment, it searches certain tables. So those tables out of the box are knowledge articles, including the attachments. 
uh, blogs, forums, ideas, web files, web pages, and cases. So those are the ones that are set up out of the box. Uh, again, if you're just using the starter template, if you're just using a plain Dataverse environment without Dynamics, then obviously you don't have knowledge articles, you don't have uh, cases, you don't have blogs or forums or ideas. Um, so some of those are obviously uh, dependent on which template you pick. Um, you know, in order to get blog, you need community. Um, in order to get forums and ideas, you need at least one of the the, the uh, Dynamics templates. So of course it depends on which templates you're using. Um, but assuming you install, say, the uh, community template, which has all of those things in it, um, it will search all of those those tables. Um, the thing to know about what does it actually um, index, like which calls it index, is that all of the tables that you want indexed on Power Pages uh, to be included in the global search should have a view. Um, now, by default, that view should be called Portal Search. Now, for whatever reason you want to be special and want to change it, there is a site setting called search forward slash index query name, um, which is by default set to Portal Search. If you need to change that, you can. Um, but for the most part, people use the Portal Search naming convention. So every table that you want to be able to be searched on Power Pages uh, needs a view called Portal Search. And the columns that appear in that view are the ones that will be included in the index. Uh, I believe the first column, when you when we look at the actual results that come back, there'll be like a uh, kind of a title or a name field. Um, so whatever column you put in first in that view will be returned as the title for that document. And then the actual kind of description will be uh, kind of the snippet where it found the text that you were searching for. So that portal search view. So we're talking about like a view that exists in you know model-driven apps, Dataverse, uh, like a traditional view. You go in there. And so if you're creating, say, a custom table, you need to create that. But if you're looking to customize which columns are indexed, Let's say you create a custom uh, field on knowledge articles that you want to be included in the search index. Um, the way you do that is by editing the portal search view that exists out of the box on knowledge articles after you install the, the Power Pages templates. Um, so let's just kind of bring up the portal search here. So um, I'm just going to search for the word subpage here. So the, the portal, the search that we're talking about here, um, this is the one that kind of shows up here. You have the options to um, kind of group searches like tables together. So in this case, I'm going to search everything for the word subpage. And in my particular case, that's just bringing me back one, uh, happens to be a web file in this case um, that does this. I've got another example here where I'm searching a custom table. And we'll talk about the custom tables and how to do that here in a minute. Um, but again, it's searching my custom table. I've restricted it to only search golf courses. If I search web pages, I'm going to get nothing back here. Um, but if I search this, change this back to golf courses, uh, I'm able to define um, how those different um, uh, groupings exist. I'll show you the settings for that as well. But that's essentially kind of how it works is that you've got in the header generally out of the box, you've got this, um, this search form. It displays this search form as well. You put in your content, you do search, and it displays the results here on the page. So if I go back to my setting here, so in terms of the actual interface, so um, the page is located at slash search. Um, as I discussed, it displays the faceted search. So that's the search on like the, the facets on the left-hand side. If I go back to it here, so we've got the modified date. Now, if we go to this one, you can see that I'm also grouping it by record type. So there are settings that where I can define how these records are grouped. So why don't we take a quick look at that one? If I, if I do search here. So a lot of this is controlled by site settings. So you can see here, there's a site setting for search forward slash record type facet entities. And this is where we're including so I'm saying downloads. Um, so the downloads label, going back to here. So downloads the here, that's grouping all the ones that are either the annotation or the ADX underscore web file table. 
Um, here, the search forward slash filters, that's what's defining what shows up in my drop down here. So I've got all my golf courses and web pages. If we go back to my site settings, you can see I've added the golf courses and I told it which table to search and web pages and which in which table to search. So um, this kind of contains all the, the site settings that might be of kind of interest for me. Um, you can see here I've got the index query name, so I'm leaving the portal search view out of the box. We've talked about this one. Um, this search query I put old in here because I turned this off, but there is a way to control um, if you're familiar with the Lucene syntax. Now, and this is where it gets a bit confusing, and this is where I was actually working with the product team this morning to, to, to clarify some questions for me. So Dataverse search itself also supports the Lucene query syntax. So Lucene is, because it, of how popular it is, many other search services, including Dataverse, support the Lucene query syntax. So this search slash query, this would be the name if I if I say this, this is what it's supposed to be, search for slash query, allows you to modify um, how some of those search results come back to basically preference certain tables. So you can say, oh, I want, you know, I, I want there to be, I want you to preference preference golf courses over knowledge articles. Um, so if you're familiar with Lucene syntax already, there's some pretty fancy stuff you can do with this. Um, when I mentioned earlier that I've got some, we've got some clients that have done some really fancy things, a lot of it has to do with, with this. Um, and so this is where, if you've done something historically, you may see there's some difference because the Lucene syntax supported by the old way may not be exactly identical to the new way. So that's where, that's one area for sure. If you've done some customization in the search query, you may want to, or you definitely want to, to test how that will work because this may, it may not work exactly the, the way that you'd expect here. Um, so I'm gonna do that. So we've got the search query. Um, you can, if you don't want the faceted view, um, which is again, the, the section down the left-hand side. Uh, it's as simple as just turning that off with the site setting. Uh, we've talked about this enable data search true. That's how you turn on the new functionality. If you don't want search at all, you can just turn it off. Um, that's a lot easier than like going through all the different places and turning off like the, the pages and, the, and the, the stuff that appears in the header. If you just don't want search, the easy thing to do is just flip that site setting to false and it will all disappear. Uh, and then there's a setting here um, for enabling additional entities, which is essentially if you want a custom table, which we have in, in our case here with golf courses, uh, if you want to enable um, other thing, other tables that aren't out of the box, you, you need to flip that site setting to true. Um, so the interface itself is, is controlled by the site settings, we which we just looked at, as well as uh, content snippets and web templates. So um, the the, the actual interface, if we were to go back to it, I can show you um, when we're looking at, um, you know, all the different kind of language. So we, when we look at say record type, modified type, a lot of these dates, um, results, you know, all this stuff, um, you know, is customizable through content snippets generally. Um, one of the reasons for that is that's how Microsoft has made the site multilingual. So if they hard coded some of these things, it just wouldn't work for, for multilingual. So a lot of this stuff is configurable. So if we go over to here and we go to content snippets. And I'm just going to uh, filter it to my current site just to keep the number down a little bit. And I just type in search you'll see a bunch of content snippets here. So I mentioned like results for the page size. So if we look at say results count, if I go in here, I save this, clear my cache. Of course, it never works when you need it to, right? Uh, current page size of approximate, oh, is that results query one-to-one -one for query? Oh, no, I'm not looking at the right one here. Uh, yeah, so like no results count, view count, 
um, if I were to search for something. So these different results, oh, it's this one right here, results count. Yeah. So anyway, we got a bunch of content snippets in here that um, um, provide us the ability to configure our um, our interface. Uh, we've also have a web temp, a couple web templates. Now, if I search for search here, again, just filter to portal that I'm looking at here. You'll see that there's two. Now there is this search template. This one is being used. This is the section here. If I go back to my search results, basically this top section is what's being used here. Um, that's this particular web template. Now the search results template is not what is used on uh, directly in. Now if I go, so I'm going to just put in a result here. So if I put in, let me just put an extra title here. So if I save this, clear config. Oh, do you know what? That's why that thing probably didn't change here. So you notice that this doesn't change. So that web template is no longer used as far as I know. Um, if we look at the actual search page itself, if I go to my web pages and I look for search and I'll open up this one, you'll see that the page template that it uses is called search. It's using the rewrite style. So some of what it does is kind of magic behind the scenes in the ASPX file. So if there's one thing that I hope you take away from this session on search, is that while there are options, and we'll talk about adding your own custom table, um, the ability to extend it, adding custom facets, like there, there's not a whole lot of flexibility in the interface and the um, like how the search works. You can extend it to add more tables, but like how the search actually works is pretty baked into the product. Um, so I do see that as an area where people often over or expect it to be more flexible than it actually is. So that would be one thing that I would be, I would caution you on um, expecting a whole lot of, of flexibility in how the search actually works apart from just being able to configure which tables are included. Um, but facets themselves, like you, you can't add a whole bunch of different facets. Um, you can add the, the groupings by the table types, but people will often want to add a bunch of facets that just don't exist out of the box based on custom tables. And that's just not, not how it works. Um, so let's talk about adding a custom table. So again, the out-of-the-box tables that are generally searched, especially on a, like a, a, a Power Pages site that doesn't have Dataverse or doesn't have Dynamics installed, that will be primarily just um, you know your web page tables, your web file tables. That that's where where um, that's what the search will do. But if you want to add your own custom tables to the search, you can do that. It's relatively straightforward um, because again, it's using Dataverse search. You want to make sure that uh, your table is is enabled for Dataverse search. So when you're in your um, solution, you can manage which tables are enabled for Dataverse search. You want to make sure that that's done for your table. Um, again, you want to set that search forward slash enable additional entities. You want to set that site setting to true that we looked at. Um, if you have already done so, you need to create a view called portal search or whatever setting you've set it up to. Um, and so you need to create that view and then add the columns that you want searched to that view. Um, now, global search for those for custom tables is based on table permissions. So um, you would need to, you know, if everyone can search all of those rows, then you would create some global permissions. But you can also use this to search things that are, you know, related directly to the contact. So you saw the list for the out of the box ones include cases. Obviously, we're not expecting people to be searching other people's cases, 
So again, we're using table permissions to enforce that. So if you have custom tables, custom table permissions um, can be used to restrict um, which, which results come back. So the portal will always enforce table permissions on those records coming back. Um, then you need to create a site marker um, and that site marker um, needs to point to a page that will be the details page when the user clicks on the results of that. So um, we'll see, we'll go through my example here for a golf course, but you need to create a details page so that when a golf course shows up in the results page, um, that when you click on the link, it will take you to a page. And the way that you tell um, Power Pages which page to take you to, um, you do that via a specifically named site marker. Um, and then finally, the, the biggest thing is to be patient. Um, indexing is an instantaneous. Um, uh, I would say that some of these settings, to me, I, I've, I've seen some kind of, I, I can't be sure that a clear cache always works the way I expect. So um, setting up um, uh, custom tables, I'll often kind of do everything I think I need to do and I'll just do a full restart of the portal um, just to eliminate any potential caching issues. Um, but again, it, it has to be indexed into Dataverse search. So if this is a task that you've got on your plate, um, I would say give yourself a few days um, of timeline to get it done where you kind of maybe set up everything, set up all the indexing and then, you know, waiting a few hours for that to all work um, versus, you know, expecting it to be there in five minutes and then banging your head against the wall as to why it's not working is, uh, you know, being patient, I think is some good advice here. So, um, yeah, it can take a little bit longer than you might expect. It's not one of those things where you click it, you turn it on and five minutes later, everything's working. Um, so yeah, let's just quickly look at the settings that I've set up here to to do my my search. So again, I have a custom table called golf courses that host uh, that that have lists of uh, golf courses that and that's what I want to add to the search. So the high level steps were I went to site settings and I. Oh, that's not what I wanted. That one there. So I made sure to enable additional entities. I set that to true. Um, everything else was kind of already set up for me. I added it to the search filters so that it would show up in my dropdown. Um, and I also added it to my uh, record type facets. Um, so I set up these settings. Um, in this case, I, I had already previously had a details page for my table. So that made it pretty simple to go to uh, site markers. And I created, uh, where is it here? The MH right here. So I created this site marker. So the syntax is the, um, the logical name of the table underscore search results page. So that's how you tell it which golf or which page to use and what it will do is it will pass the id of the record to that page using the id query string parameter so if i go here and i click on my augusta national page uh, the link will be whatever is the url for that page and it will pass that in so in this case i've pointed it to a page that has a basic form on it so um, this basic form would just have to be configured to accept the ID parameter. Now, ID is what they accept out of the box, um, now, but sometimes people will change what that, that is. I don't believe that it's possible to change this querying parameter to be something else from the search, so you'll want to make sure that you are using ID on your, on your form. Um, so yeah, I created that. Uh, I already had table permissions set up so people could read those. Um, and then I also, if I go into my actual um, app here, or yeah, I'll do it this way. That's the way I normally do it. Uh, I go into my golf course and I have a view here called portal search where I created the, or I added the columns. In my case, I've just indexed the name and the description. Uh, and then, like I said, I was patient, or in fact, I wasn't patient. I wasn't patient this morning and things weren't working the way I was expecting. Um, and then I learned that I just needed to be patient. So that's why I'm passing that bit of knowledge along. 
Uh, okay, uh, Jurgen asks, will the rebuild index button only work for power pages um, side of things? So um, the rebuild index button, if you go, if you look at this, you'll see that I do not have a rebuild index button. So the rebuild index is for the old style, the Lucene.net uh, implementation. So as soon as you flip over to the Dataverse um, search uh, version, which you have to, again, is scheduled to have to be done here in the next few months, I think October, um, the rebuild index button goes away. Um, the rebuilding of the index just happens automatically as part of the Dataverse search uh, index rebuild. So Power Pages itself doesn't have its own special index. Uh, when you perform a search on your Power Pages site, it is going to the Dataverse Search API. So I don't think that that I'm not aware of there being any capabilities to rebuild the index, but it wouldn't be required in the same way. In the old system, there was kind of it was let's say inconsistent about how quickly the things would get rebuilt, and so it was sometimes recommended that uh, you you do a rebuild manually. Uh, I believe the Dataverse search is quite a bit more robust, so it doesn't, you know, doesn't require you to to worry about rebuilding the, it manually. But yeah, the minute you turn the Dataverse search site setting on, that third button on this page disappears. Okay. Um, so yeah, that's kind of the process for adding a custom table. Um, make sure you flip that setting on that enables additional entities. You create the view, you create the permissions, you create the, the details page, add the site marker, um, and then it's as soon as you do that, these results should start showing. So I should be able to go like that, put in something like this, and it's going to show me my, my other golf course because that's been indexed as part of the name. And now you can see it's showing up in my, my record types here as well. um okay so in terms of search that's that's kind of the high level details again where it gets fancy is um that search query so the lucene uh search like the index or the lucene syntax for um you know if you if you want to preference certain tables over other ones you can get quite a bit fancier there um there is a a search um you, you can perform a search via liquid so there is a search uh, index uh, object in Liquid. So if you want to basically pass in a query via Liquid um, and then get the results back and then you basically get it back as an object. So similar to if you've already used the fetch XML query in Liquid, you can do a similar thing uh, using the, the Dataverse search um, and basically get the results back and, and, and put them up that way. So if you want to get something a little bit more custom with the Dataverse search, you can do that using using Liquid. Uh, let me just see if I might be configure search if we go into Liquid. That would be a Liquid overview. So in here, chart search index there it is so um yeah so that there's a search index so you can see in here um you do a, a query so this is queried for the word support which you could in theory pull pull in from the query string you can define paging uh, and then you basically get your within here you get your results so again very similar to how it works with the um uh, the fetch XML one as well. Um, again, the, the really nice thing about uh, this global search or the Dataverse search functionality is that you can get results back from multiple tables at once. In one single query, you can get results from multiple tables. So really, really cool. Like that, that, that would be the big, the big feature that that I would say most people are looking for when they're using this is that they want to search across the site and not just one table. Um, okay, uh, I see no questions at this point. So um, I did want to say that the next call will be on August 31st. Um, so that's the last Thursday in August um, at the same time, 3 p.m. Eastern time, 12 p.m. Pacific time. Um, 
I will again express my appreciation to Jason and the MS Dynamics World team and we'll open the floor to if there's any additional questions about search or any other Power Pages topics that may come to mind. If we don't have any additional questions, I am happy to end the call early, but we'll give it another minute or so. Um, in the meantime, uh, Jason, how's the weather in, uh, are, are you at home in the uh, northeast corner there of the United States? Yeah, it's uh, muggy. It's muggy. A, muggy is the best word for it. How about yeah. where you are? Yeah, we were just, uh, I was in Toronto last week. We went to some Blue Jays games and did a few different things. And uh, yeah, I would also describe it as muggy there, uh, back home here in Saskatchewan. It's, it's, I would say it's less muggy. It's been very hot though. There's been heat warnings almost every day. It's supposed to cool down here a little bit, but uh, um, not as bad as Palm Springs though. My parents uh, spent some time in Sp Palm Springs over the over the winter. So they are always kind of keeping an eye on the Palm Springs weather. And it was in the like, yeah, it was in the 40s, and that's uh, unbearably hot. I don't want anything to right. do. Right. Or yeah, and that's what 110 or 120 or something crazy Fahrenheit. So um, yeah, that doesn't sound like much fun. Uh, okay, uh, we got one question from Lucas here. Uh, do you experience a lot of bugs with the new Power Pages? Um, now, if you're referring to the editor of Power Pages. Um, I would say uh, yes. Um, to be honest, I don't use the Power Pages Design Studio as an editor very often. Um, I, I've been recently been working um, on a course that, that Engineered Code offers, um, and that's been an opportunity for me to learn some of the, the newer ways of doing things that I haven't tried so much um, I'm kind of set in my old ways. So while going through and, and producing all this kind of course content, um, we, you know, I'm trying all the all the different ways. So like for example, creating lists in Power Pages, creating forms in Power Pages, uh, and yeah, I've I've noticed a few kind of wonky experiences in there. Um, now I would say that for me, I can always fall back because I know kind of the old way of doing things. Now, if you're referring to actual bugs for the users of Power Pages, I would say no. I have I haven't really kind of noticed that. But I would say with the with the Design Studio, they're releasing lots of functionality pretty quickly. And like for example, what was I doing the other day? It was I was working on a form. Oh, I was working on um, I was I was working with lists, and there was a query. I was setting up all the filters. So when you when you have a list, you can set up the filtering. And so it can either have a bunch of filters on the left hand side or above the list. And and I mean it was a pretty extreme edge case, but like as part of these this training course that I that I uh, we put together, like I'm trying to go through all the little bits of functionality, right? And so um there was one bit of functionality about um about creating, I think it was like the range queries where it just wasn't quite right. And so I I was in touch with the product team about it and yeah, there was just something about that. They, they, there was some ID problem that they were working on, um, but the answer was always you could just go and do it in the in the uh, in the portal management app or the new Power Pages um, uh, management app that's available in the enhanced data model. So, um, oh yeah, and so yeah, Lucas has further clarified here. He's talking about the adv advanced um, data model. Um, my experience with the enhanced data model is relatively limited. I, I, it's not something that I'm like, you know, with existing clients where we're jumping, you know, where we're saying, hey, everyone's got to be moving to the enhanced data model. Uh, we've got a few clients that want it to be bleeding edge and using it. Um, I yeah, I would I would not be surprised to hear um, that the working in the enhanced data model they would be a, a bit more buggy. Um, I know that there's just kind of entire pieces of functionality that are, are are missing with the enhanced data model. Something to do with, I think it's like the list action button configuration um, isn't there yet. So um, I believe the enhanced data model is still preview, I think. Um, 
And yeah, I, I would say that for the most part, it's not something that like we're playing with it to, to see how it works, but there's, uh, yeah, it, it, I could understand the sentiment that you feel like a test user um, using the enhanced data model because it is pretty new. And I think, I think it's still um, in preview. Um, so that could be, you know, some of the justification with, if you're using something in preview, you kind of are a test user, so. Um, okay, any other questions before we wrap up for the day? Uh, yeah, yeah, Lucas is saying he's using it to, to use the pipelines, which which is how I guess, um, yeah, for sure. I mean, that's that's where I've used the, the new enhanced data model is to try the solution aware stuff. Um, uh, yeah, I'm still, I, I, I'm not there yet for a, a big power pages project project that's that's the direction I'm going to move. Um, I could see that being uh, maybe maybe 2024, but I would be surprised if in the next few months where if we spin up if we spun up a new power pages site right now, it would probably still be under the old model, I think so. All right. Um, well, I want to thank everyone for joining us today. Um, look forward to end of august um in the meantime we've got our our youtube videos that we put out if you have any uh, topic suggestions i don't think we have anything figured out quite yet for next month so if there's anything you'd like to see covered um please let us know we we always like to take suggestions and and give people the the topics that they they want to learn about so um thanks everyone for attending and uh jason i think we can wrap it up here all right well uh Thanks again, Nick. Thanks to everyone in the audience for your time and attention. We've recorded today's event. We'll be sharing that soon. And we will wrap up there. Have a great day, everyone.